Yeah. Yeah. I was just in Germany. Uh, so you're in Germany? Yeah. yeah. So you're waiting here now? Or? Yeah, free, free for the moment and just uh, enjoying my summer, working out, rehab and all kinds of stuff. Make sure I'm ready for whatever the... Uh, yeah, yeah, future this year, uh, take. I had to do the timing of the injury. I missed the whole season. This what year. is the future uh, going to bring you? I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. But <laughs> well, hopefully a job though. Well, yeah. so. yeah. Back overseas? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Chances are. Yeah. yeah. So we're all in my 10th year. year so next year uh, I've had three years in Germany, uh, one in right. France, so one in Belgium, and then the D League season. And then a year as a GA. Might be a spot open with the Cavaliers. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, even you can mess up a game like that, but they're not taking that many injured people. <laughs> the years of GA was your best year, wasn't it? I think so. I had a blast. Yeah, wasn't it? Like, weren't we so good that year? How does that process work? I mean, you work with your agent. How do you hook up with the team? Uh, my agent uh, has uh, other individuals, or you could say agents in other countries that they work with, and. Uh, Either they mention me or my agent yeah, drops my name uh, to them and kind of they just do their research and if they want me to be there, they, they invite me and if they don't, they just don't call back. <laughs> What's the time? Like? What do you know? What are you going to know? Uh, it can be any time, okay. literally. It can be next week where I've gotten offers, but nothing that I would want, <laughs> nothing that I would want to do. So, so you got to stay in shape and be ready to get yeah, out. Yeah, that's the fun part. <laughs> How you doing, Justin? Good. How you doing? I haven't seen you since what? Fairmont. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple. She almost. What was the process? Getting over mental health after thirty-five years. Oh, uh, I don't really know. I can't tell you. Like it was. It was How long did it take? I don't know. I don't even know if I'm over. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, no. Seriously, no, no. But uh, I have no clue. Like it's just like I felt that uh, something happened. I tried my best to come back from it. I actually found a. A place where I can come back to and just you know rehab and relax and get my thoughts in order. That's why my GA here. See what I want to do. I love the coach, but I I like love to play a little bit more. And that helps that you know I had a kid and I was like yeah, I want to make a little bit more money. So in turn you know I just decided to do a rehab and get stronger and get myself together and go play. I'm sure you wanted to prove something. Yeah, I don't. I just don't want to go out in terms I didn't feel like I played well or I wasn't happy with the way I played. So like I went to the D League and I got hurt and I just didn't want that to be the end of the story. More or less like, oh, he could have played but he makes it hurt. I'll continue to play. I enjoy it. Do you ever ask yourself what might have been? Not in the past like four years. <laughs> so yeah, everything's good. I have a family, I got two boys. I'm super hyped and happy that they get to come with me overseas and watch me club. And you know, they're into things. I'm a dad. I go to T-ball games and stuff like that. So I'm having fun. <laughs> Literally. So it's awesome. What about that Duke game? I mean, you got hurt. You guys were a comeback team that year. Oh, yeah, that would have been fun. <laughs> what it means to like, think about it. But, uh, I definitely didn't go the way <laughs> we planned it to go. They were a really good team, and uh, they won. Uh, the cars built themselves. Hey, everybody, everybody loves somebody. Everybody makes mistakes. Hey, man, don't mess yourself up. Allow me. <laughs> well, I think back to all some of those games. The Villanova game, especially when you guys could do anything with this season, lock them down really the game second. Yeah, man, I mean, great coaching. Uh, <laughs> a lot of luck, but <laughs> like, it all, it's, it's all according to me, it just, we had the, uh, it was something about our team that when we were down, like, that's when we, uh, we all looked at, looked at one another and locked in, and we knew we could come back and win a game at any point in time, no matter how much we were down, as long as it wasn't you know, some crazy number with, like, four minutes to go or three minutes to go, we felt we could come back. It seemed like yesterday or a long time ago. Uh, I remember stuff, but I mean, it's my memory. So, like, you know, like it could be. You know, it feels like yesterday for me, but like it could be because that was probably like the last time I like, <laughs> was like healthy. You know? I remember everything vividly. Sad. Those are stupid questions. I always kind of wanted to ask you. The Big East tournament, yeah, senior yeah. Year, the, the shot against Georgetown. Yeah. yeah. Man, watching that highlight as many times over the years. Uh, you ever? 
Dennis was wide open underneath the basket. Yeah. Have you ever see that? Or? I still can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, I remember he told me. And I was Did he? Like, oh, okay. Really? <laughs> and then I look at it from time to time when like people play it or whatever, and I still don't see it. Like I just don't see it. So. <laughs> well, you can't see it with your eyes closed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you throwing something up there, it's a hell near and really that close. But. Yeah, I always say that. I still don't say it. <laughs> but, uh, so he brought it up a few times. Yeah, he brought it. You can't even bring it up all the time. So I think he passed the ball to Dennis. Right. Like, hey, the shot. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a good dude, though. Yeah. Yeah. Did you call a mark yet? Did you call that shot? Did you call any of your game winners? Once again, whatever the people tell you, have it. Have it. <laughs> the way, I don't want to ruin their story. <laughs> if they say that's what happened, that's what happened. So it all worked out. It worked out that year. How do you feel your game has changed or developed since playing here in Morgantown to where you are now? Uh, I learned a lot more about the game. Uh, I felt the. Uh I felt like I was always a smart player, but I felt like I had to become a little bit smarter to make up for the... I was already a lack of athleticism, but uh, it was a little bit worse after the injury. So just becoming a, a bit smarter and learning what I can and can't do against, you know, more explosive uh, grown men as opposed to, you know, 18, 19 year old kids. And uh, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, regardless of injury or not, so I know how to maneuver and how to work my way into a game and how to, if I'm playing bad, to stay out of the way, so, <laughs> I'm smart enough to do that, so, I mean, oh, excuse me, sorry, so, yeah, I mean, it's just, that's the adjustment I would say I had to make, just learn the game. And being back here in Morgantown, not only for this event this weekend, but over the summer, what's it like to be back here, get a practice and play with some guys who are not only your former teammates, but other guys who play for Coach Hux as well? It's good. I mean, it's, just, it's always good to be around people that you know and you feel comfortable with and uh, you've, all, you've gone through things with, you know, uh, it's basketball, it's not, you know, something like a doctor or somebody else to save the lives, but at the same time, you know, we have situations that cause a ton of stress and game and things like that. And, we all come together and help one another out through those situations so you can come closer through practices or a guy makes a mistake and the entire team has to flip a tire or have to do certain things. You you grow, you have the camaraderie grows, and those things grow. And these are your friends and family now. So regardless of how many years pass, I was actually talking about this with Coach Martin. Like, regardless of how many years pass, these individuals tend to be some of the first people you call or talk to or see will want to see it yeah. because you know you've uh, had that, that relationship with them. So great to be back knowing that if you mess up, you don't have to go on the treadmill. Right? Yeah, it's just true. I mean, that's a, that's a bright side. If I did, I probably wouldn't be here. I wouldn't come back. I'd probably go somewhere else. He's a uh, coach. I guess really good dude. He's pretty cool. Allowing us to come back. You know, a family thing. Come back whenever you want to. You're always welcome. Fun, fun kind of thing. So that's important to have. We expect all the new guys in in June. When or somebody may be later. I think there's one that's going to be a little later, but the rest of them will be here. Yeah, they're going to be here for uh, the second session. So you've gone through this with this many new guys over the summer. How much can you get them acclimated to what you want to do, or not at all, just a few basics? Well, I think, I think the best thing is having these guys around, having our former guys around, because they probably do a better job of preparing them and, for what's coming than anybody does. You know, they, they've been through it. They know how much it's, it's helping them now in, in, in their careers, their basketball careers. So they sell it way better than I ever could. Turn into a left-handed team. Is this the largest collection of left-handers? <laughs> We couldn't make any right here. We figured we'd give it a go left hand and see if that helped. I don't know. I mean, the last, who's the last, the last, the last one? Well, I guess Wes. Wes, but I was going to say the last one before that was probably in the zone. He didn't make any, so I don't know. It, it didn't help. It didn't help that much. But you could have three on a four at one time. Does that change anything? You become a left handed team a little bit? Probably, yeah, probably. I think right enters have a tendency to go right, and left enters have a tendency to go left. So they'll probably, probably play a little more in left. Depends on who has the ball. Are you a good left handed coach? <laughs> I'm a terrific left handed coach. I haven't had very many to screw up. <laughs>
Yes. I don't know about maybe one through five, but one through thirteen. Is this one of the deep returns maybe talent wise? Put together here. Yeah. Don't we always think that, John, until we actually see them? Yeah. Yeah. On paper, I guess. Uh, I mean, it's a whole lot different when I'm watching oh, yeah. the AU game than it is somebody up here watching uh, yeah, up your shirt here. It's, 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 it's a whole lot different. Uh, it, it's just hard to explain how multifaceted being a good basketball player that you have to be. You, know, you have to be able to guard and rebound, and there's transition offense and transition defense, and zone offense and zone offense against one three one two three three two one two two. Uh, so there's a lot of things to learn, and that doesn't count. You know, man offense and man offense against perimeter teams or man offense against post teams. So, and then you got to rebound the ball. And we didn't do a very good job of that early on. And as we spent more time on it, we got to be better at it. We were a bad transition team. And hopefully we've got guys that are better with the ball and make better decisions with the ball in transition because we are a transition team. I mean, it's kind of scary how good we could have been if we were a, a really good transition team a year ago because we got transition as much or more than anybody could have. How many shooters do you think you have? A lot of shooters. Everybody's a shooter. <laughs> I'm not sure how many makers we got, <laughs> but we got a lot of guys who shoot. Uh, this guy, they have no hesitation in shooting. <laughs> <laughs> about leadership? That's going to be something that Beatles obviously can do right there. Beatles has been terrific. You know, Beatles has been around. Beatles has been around a long time, too. Um, Beatles has been, I think Beatles, Beatles a little bit more verbal than what he's seen. But he's just been terrific. I mean, I think certainly those two guys are the guys. You've got some size, too, in the backcourt if you're concerned about that. I mean, so you've got some pieces there. What what were you thinking when you were doing those last two signs? What were you trying to do with your roster? Well, we got Jermaine. Jermaine's really our only really side. You know? I liked it when, when Deshaun was playing point guard. He didn't like it at all, but, but, but I liked it a lot. I mean, talk about being able to switch everything. We could switch everything in the small sky before with 6'6". Six, six. I liked that a lot. I don't know. I, I, I just think we gotta we got to throw them out there and kind of see what shakes out and who's good at what. I, you, know, you, you, you would think that Jordan would be really good transition. I, JC said this past year that the hardest guy he played against all year was Nav. And, 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 you know, so if we can get all those guys healthy and keep them healthy, and we don't have a bunch of flu go through the team and you know all the kind of things that we went through a year ago. I mean, who knows? The schedule is much, much harder. Much, much harder. Can you expound on that for a little bit? I mean, who's, I know you took him with you and he, he at least got to go and warm up and experience all the different courts, at least get a feel for him. But what have you seen from him after his recovery or during his recovery? Well, he obviously, he didn't get in a lot of five-on-five stuff because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to win games. Um, but he played a lot against, you know, JC from a, from a defensive standpoint when we were on offense. And JC really thinks he's he's really a good defender, and we're we're certainly going to need that from him. I, I think we've got a lot of guys that can do more and more things. I think we got a lot of guys that can, that can play multiple positions, and, and I think that's that's going to be important. Nap being one of those guys, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to put Nap on a small forward at all because he's he's got great strength. You can see those guys too. Pardon, Haley. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, I've seen Nap a whole lot more than what I've seen Jermaine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I would think so. I would think with his with his size and his length, he's got a lot of people. I think getting a third consistent score this year. Last year, you had two guys you could count on. A third guy, you know, is that going to be important for you to maybe find that this year? I think we're going to be able to score. I don't think that's. I mean, you know, we got a guy who made uh, in a three point shooting contest 29 out of 30. Pretty good. And, and obviously, we've seen Beetle shoot it, we've seen Chase shoot it. He's just shooting the ball much, much better. I, I think Sykes has really extended his range and, and how we can play him. So, 
I, I don't, I'm not really worried about us making shots. I mean, I'm maybe worried about the past leading to the shot more than I am. What about the big guys coming in with uh, uh, Gordon and Colburn? What do you expect from them? What do you see out of them when you watch them? I, I think with Andrew, I think because he didn't play a year ago and because he's still kind of rehabbing that knee, he'll probably be, he'll start a little slower than the rest of them. You know, I don't know about, Derek, Derek is going to get thrown in there with, uh, you know, that nice grown ass man. Andrew's a big dude, Sag's a big dude, Logan's a big dude, and they all, they've all know how to play. They've all, they've all got a lot more experience than what Derek does, so, you know, we'll have to see, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I gave up a long time ago. Everybody always wants to know what do you think uh, this guy's going to do. How, how do I know? Absolutely. You, know. you have ideas, but I'm guessing that this year they're maybe more biased. Yeah, this guy can go here, this guy can go here. Is that, is that accurate? Well, you know what you're you know what you're going to get from from Eastside. So, yeah, I, I think we're going to get a lot more from Sags. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> I think Nap, Chase, those guys, you know, we got a pretty good idea. Although they're both shooting the ball much better than what they shot the ball a year ago. Our guys have put a lot of time in the game. I mean, it, the, the culture here, because of a lot of these guys that are that are standing over here that they created, has been really, really good. And this building is this building's been a godsend for West Virginia basketball. I mean, when I came back, it hadn't changed since I was a player. And we still had we still had phys ed in the Coliseum. We still have concerts. Congratulations. And, and intramurals and everything else. So that part of it didn't change, and it's hard to get time in. I mean, that, the, the the story about Alexander sleeping on a on a uh, an, an air mattress in a locker room so he could go out and shoot at two in the morning. That's when he could get in there, you know. And, and that's that's all changed now. It's, it's become part of the process, which is great. Just curious, how do you manage? Guys, the whole last question. You mold that into a win. And we had to do that all the time at Cincinnati. Uh, how do you do that? How do you get those guys to play the way they need to play to win, but develop their games? Well, it's not as hard as what some people may think. You know, it, it's kind of uh, Kenyon wanted to shoot the ball uh, a little further out on the floor. We'll make them. Make them, I'll let you shoot them. You know, and as as he made more and more perimeter shots, he shot more and more perimeter shots. We were playing South Carolina one time. We were off. We were just absolutely off. Our guards couldn't couldn't make a shot. Not even close to making a shot. They kept shooting them. And I said, why don't we do this? Well, let's let the big guys go out and jack up threes, and you little guys try to rebound. <laughs> See how you like it. And I had this guy, Keith Storch, who made a bunch of them, and I'm like, well, maybe we found so he shot threes, you know? If, uh, if, if I don't care who it is, if Sykes makes, is making perimeter shots, then by God, shoot them. But if you're not making them, don't hurt our team. Not that hard. Really. His, his improvement from last year to this was really up. I mean, how many times have you seen guys progress like that? That's what they're supposed to do. I, I mean, we'd be here for a while if I if I told you all of them. You know, Eric Martin, Kenyon Martin. You know, you to maybe start with those two: Eric Hicks, Jason Maxfield, Steve Logan. I mean, who got? Who, I mean, I don't know if I ever had anybody get as good as Steve Logan got mm -hmm. in, in, in a short period of time. But it's the process, and that's. It's it's the uh, it's the culture I think above and beyond everything else. It's the program. It's what we do. You know, we Kenyon Martin wasn't that highly recruited, believe it or not. And but he got better and better and better and better. We, we had 
some guys that were very highly recruited. We had a bunch of guys that weren't, but they they got better and better and better because we worked. You know, we put time in and try to do the right thing. You mentioned once about Kent Kenyon. You said that really the secret for him was learning how to pass. Is that maybe Sags' is deal where he's got to learn how to pass better and understand things that we do? You can pass it. They can't run and double. You know, you don't see him running double LeBron very much, right? Because he can pass. But you go see him double those guys that can't pass. And, and you just you hurt yourself you know, whenever you not don't have the ability to pass. But that's playing and understanding. The more you play, the more you understand things. Those things come with it. It's a skill. It's a skill, just like shooting and dribbling it. It's a skill. Did you look for that skill when you're recruiting this class? Because I know a number of guys, everybody talks about McKay, but Haley, Matthews, all talk like they are well, good passers. we didn't before. <laughs> well, so, you said it, they didn't. No, we didn't. So we just tried to get some guys to play hard before after that lunch we had that wouldn't. So, yeah, we're trying to get some guys to pass the ball. But, I mean, there's a... There's a, a, a I experienced it. I mean, I thought I was a really good passer in high school, but then you have those guys jump up in your shirt, you know, and it makes it a little more difficult. And they're bigger, they're longer, they're stronger. So it takes a little while to adjust. It's kind of like I'm trying to adjust to grow off with hair and no beard <laughs> rather than a beard and no hair. He can't get it right, can he? Just uh -huh. yeah, thought he was one of the Backstreet Boys. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. You mentioned one of the guys wouldn't be enrolled until later in the summer. Which one's that? Uh, Emmett. Emmett hadn't graduated yet. So he can't, obviously can't be here to start the first session until he graduates from high school. How important is that summer to you? Really important. Conceivably, you've got enough talent to be ready to go. Guys. Yeah, I mean, we, we've tried to do a lot of things. We, you know, Lamont and Beadle have both gone and overseas and played on a team. Wes uh, and Chase are going to go this year. And we've tried to do that just to give them, you know, different experience with different people. Deshaun did a bunch of it with us in basketball. So, uh, it's, it's not a part time job anymore. It used to be a part-time job, it's not a part-time job anymore. I see your JC, I and mean, what are you hearing about him? I see some of you slip in the first round. You were out there when he was out there in Brooklyn. I know, I, you know, they were saying that there's not going to be a lot of guards taken in the first round, and I watched what's the guy, Wojciechowski, and Seth, who has become just a hell of an expert, um, and somebody else, and they had the mock draft on there, and they're at the bottom of the first round was all guards. And I'm, I'm looking at those guys, and I'm like, I can't imagine that anybody that knows anything about basketball but would take some of those guys before they take JC. Now that's providing they need a guard, but obviously those guys are really wrong if that people that they're saying we're going to take a guard don't need a guard. Media value. I mean, he's got a skill that a lot of guys don't have. He's willing really to guard and he can guard. He has, I'm sorry, he has destroyed everybody that he's played against in, in workouts uh, to the point where a lot of guys won't go if he's there. Is their you know their agents when they find out that he's going to be there they they cancel, <laughs> which is that's a lot of respect. Bob, you replaced Andy Kettler this spring. How important was that hire and finding the guy that fits what you need him to do? It was really important. I mean, our, our strength coach spends more time with our guys than we do because he's allowed to. You know? um, I call Mickey Marani. I don't know if you guys remember Mick. Mick, Mick's a West Virginia guy. He's from here. Uh, he was my strength coach at Cincinnati. He's at Ohio State now. He's Urban's right-hand guy. And I called him, and the first first guy out of his mouth was, was Sean. Uh, I called Scott Greenwald, who was my strength coach at Cincinnati and at Kansas State. My strength coach South Carolina now, and the first guy out of his mouth was Sean. I said, Hugs, you got to get Sean back. you got to get him. And then I called Andy, and I said, Andy, you know, who was obviously did a great job here, and Andy said, you got to get Sean back. So, we, we got who we targeted, we got who, you know, John, I, I, as I get older, I realize what I don't know, you know. 
and I used to think I knew a little bit about strength training and that, you know, and now I realize I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> so I try to hire people who know what they're doing, because I don't. I don't, I'm not, I told Sean whenever we talked, I said, listen, brother, I'll tell you one thing I can promise you, I won't be down there telling you what to do. I don't. I don't know enough about it. I'm not telling you what to do. He's with the kids all the time. And you got to have a personality to be able to deal with it. Right? Yeah, well, we're on a road in July. He's here. You know, and we're talking about opening up gym a little bit. I mean, we're, we're gone in June. He's going to be here. So, you know, their time off. Their time off is when the guys aren't here, which is only you know a couple of weeks out of summer. You know.